All right, welcome to Prep Huddle Live, our December 3rd edition, and we're excited to have you guys be joining us, um, probably watching the recording. Uh, we had, had some issues with the uh, live, um, but we're testing out a new little new format. Tony, you'll be able to see this later. Um, we're bringing you in FaceTime, but um, we're, we've been uh, you know enjoying some time with some family, but wanted to touch base with everyone on strivesports.com and Prep Huddle Live. Um, we're going to do two shows here in December and want to just kind of recap the football championship uh, championships from last week. We had two Strive schools uh, win, the, win the state championship, which was very exciting. And uh, we'll probably do another show here as uh, some of the teams get into basketball, which starts tomorrow. And many of our schools will be starting to stream uh, those events. And so um, and then take some time off for Christmas and hit it hard in January. So, um, Tony, let's talk about uh just kind of the state football championship. I know you weren't able to make it there in person, but I know you watched all of the Shrive schools there, and uh, just kind of want to get your two cents on how you went that, how how you thought that went. Yeah, you know, obviously the kids love playing at Memorial Stadium. So the, the two days there in Lincoln before Thanksgiving last Monday and Tuesday were a good day. Uh, I think surprised probably by most of the results and in that there was really only one close game, and that was the first one uh, where Exeter Milligan beat Anselmo Myrna 40-26. Uh, to 26. It was a, a close game that Anselmo Myrna led 18-14 going into the fourth quarter. And, and Exeter Milligan really got a momentum change when – uh, Coach Phillippe kind of put uh, Kyle Jensen back in a wildcat type formation, and they were able to control the ball, control the clock, and force a turnover in the fourth quarter. and And they had two kind of sustained drives, and then Jensen broke free on a on a big run in the fourth quarter as well to to, to take control of that game. And you know, then you really thought after that, all those game, all these games would be really good, and 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 in every game, one team really just asserted their will, and 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 things kind of went the wrong way. So uh, in the D1 game, you had Hemingford, uh, who wins uh, against Burning Davenport Shickley. I think it was 52 to eight or 54 to eight. I'm not don't remember exactly what that score was, but uh, here's a game where Burning Davenport Shickley has comes in with loads of offense, and they couldn't even get they didn't get anything going um against Hemingford uh Colt Foster led the defense for Hemingford just an outstanding performance and then Brady Turek and Ethan Skinner uh in the backfield excellent runners and and Hemingford really just dominated all the way through the playoffs they had that uh that quarterfinal round game or I'm sorry the round of 16 game that was a 12-7 game with Blue Hill um but after that uh they were just dominating uh, performances. And, and that was in a class where, as we kind of discussed that week, those eight quarterfinal teams in D1 were 78-2 and two going into the quarterfinals. And Hemingford really was just a class of that bunch. So well-deserved there. And then uh, in Class A, you had uh, one of the most dominating seasons I've ever seen when, in Omaha North's uh, championship run with uh, Calvin Strong, obviously the first uh, ever 7,000 yard rusher in Class A, um, and then you know they really rolled through the season and obviously well deserved beating Omaha Creighton Prep in the finals. Uh, in fact, uh, mm-hmm. Stu Pospisil this week he actually um, actually ranked Omaha North third in his all time rankings. Updated them for the first time since since 2003. So uh, really a uh, a dominating year uh, from the Vikings. Uh, in Class A. And then on Tuesday, uh, David City Aquinas wins their third title in four years. Uh, control Hardington Cedar Catholic. I think there was eight turnovers by Hardington Cedar Catholic in that game. And so Aquinas, uh, with that kind of triple option, uh, wing bone attack, uh, they were able to control that game. And then in C1, we had a Strive School, Boone Central. Uh, they played undefeated Ashland Greenwood, who was also in the finals last year and uh, lost to Strive School Kozad. So maybe we can sway the Blue Jays uh, to uh, <laughs> move on over to uh, uh, Strive, and maybe that'll take a uh, – maybe that'll get them over the hump there. But that was a game I thought would be really good. I was looking forward to that one the most. I thought it would be a really good football game. Uh, Boone Central had other ideas. Uh, White Mazur, uh, I think he was close to 400 yards uh, total yardage and all-purpose yards and six touchdowns, an 83-yard punt return. I mean, he did pretty much everything. And and uh, that was just a, uh, a dominating, I think it was a 54-14 to 14 win uh, for Boone Central. They completed an undefeated season, send out longtime coach Arnie Johnson out as a state champion. Um, 
Coach Johnson had the Cardinals in the playoffs every year since 1997. So uh, one of the one of the legends uh, in high school football in Nebraska, in, in my opinion. Uh, in Class B, uh, you had Omaha Scott uh, defeat uh, Elkhorn, and they were uh, uh, Omaha Scott was. Uh, just dominating through the playoffs as well. Uh, they had two losses midseason where I think they turned it over 10 or 11 times come, uh, total in two games. And other than that, nobody really played with them. So uh, their quarterback, Isaiah Ramsey, one of the top in the state, and uh, Coach Matt Terman there obviously has good bloodlines, and uh, they've done a heck of a job at Scott and won their second championship in a row. So a lot a lot of teams that have been there done that, and uh, – uh, you really saw that uh, in the finals as those teams who had been there before uh, really took control of those football games. Yeah, and I just want to comment on Boone Central. That was uh, being down on the sidelines was fun. And uh, well, the best part about it was, and, and I didn't actually, we didn't get the chance to see Wyatt Missouri. I know we wanted to head up there uh, to watch him live in person, but we watched him on Strive and he sent us that uh, clip, huddle clip at the beginning of the year. So we had all seen him. But the best part was seeing all the Lincoln and Omaha people that had not seen him yet this year. And they were just like, this kid is unbelievable. Why isn't Nebraska looking at him? You know, And it turns out he, Wyoming, uh, he had visited Wyoming this fall and um, is getting some interest. But that was cool just to see the state, the whole state get to see this kid and just a good kid and – a great, unbelievable athlete, and just had the game of his life uh, in front yeah. of the whole state of Nebraska. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, he's a special talent. Uh, reminds me a lot of, uh, really, in, in stature, of uh, Danny Woodhead. I mean, he's kind of a 5'9 guy. Uh, let me tell you, if he was 6'2", uh, <laughs> Nebraska would be looking at him. Uh, you know, and I don't know why they don't look at him at 5'9", but, you know, at 6'2", he's kind of a Nathan Gary build type, uh, and he's as fast as Nathan Gary, I think, if you ask me football speed wise so uh it'll be interesting somebody's going to get a gem there uh he's a high level fcs guy at least in my opinion and you, as you said uh a wyoming uh a wyoming type uh, uh i think he could fit in at a, at a program like that absolutely yeah so that, that was fun just to see everyone's eyes light up that first half because they just he just put on a show i mean it was it was unbelievable so that was fun, and we're excited. Again, congratulations to Exeter Milligan, uh, your Class D2 champions, and Boone Central Newman Grove uh, C1 champions, and BDS. Uh, they just ran into an unbelievable Hemingford team, as you said, um, who was on a mission. Those and uh, uh, So congrats to BDS for, for state runner-ups and D1 as well. So, um, Any other thoughts on football? I think we'll kind of – transition to a sport that both you and I uh, love and have uh, connections with and I still try to play once in a while. Um, Not me. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some hoops and uh, kind of your thoughts. I, we haven't had a whole lot of time to, to look. I'm just kind of looking at the schedule here. We do have some games on Strive starting tomorrow night. Um, Centennial's hosting David City. York's going to play Ralston. Um, Central City's going to GI Northwest, and then Malcolm's going to be going to Heartland, Humphrey St. Francis at Osceola. So, and then it looks like Menden girls play Southern Valley, which uh, I'm assuming Menden uh, will be lights out this year, but Southern Valley uh, has got some girls that are pretty good, and they've got a new coach in uh, Heath uh, Burkle, I believe, from Deschler. Uh, is going to be taking over um, from uh, Darren Toby as he's now superintendent at Southern Valley. So, Got a good good lineup. You can check that out up on the upcoming events uh, that will be live tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, you know I have it. I, I'd love to tell you I've sat here and re researched basketball for the last two weeks, but uh, to be fair, I have not. Uh, so I try to maybe go off memory. I know Mike Patterson of the Omaha World Herald did put out preseason rankings. We can run through those really quick. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, uh, Millard West, uh, his drive school was third uh, in uh, in the in the overall top ten. Uh, defending champion Omaha Benson and of course Jessica Shepard and Fremont uh, one and two there. Uh, I believe Jessica Shepard, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, has been ranked. I believe fifth in the ESPN top 100 rankings as far as uh, senior recruits for basketball. So impressive there. Um, also in the all class top 10 is, uh, is Norris at number nine. They'll be on strive 
Uh, is that Saturday, Taylor? I believe so. Uh, yeah. They'll they'll come to Grand Island Northwest and 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 play Coach Herzberg, uh, the Vikings defending state champion in our preseason number eight uh, in Class B uh, with Norris number two. So uh, interesting look at the all class top ten though. I think it really gives you an idea of how good girls athletics are in Nebraska. Uh, three non Class A teams uh, are in the top ten. So uh, he's got Pius fifth, Crofton who was twenty seven and one last year. And Norris, uh, who uh, uh, who obviously will play Northwest on uh, on Friday uh, or on Saturday, excuse me. Yep. Um, in C one, uh, Minden is third. The aforementioned uh, Whippets are third. Uh, they you know they obviously lost the Kissinger twins, but some would say their younger sister was as good as as both of them, and she'll be back. Uh, so they are third, and obviously will be on Strive there. Uh, did you say that's Friday? Yeah. Oh no, that that is uh, that's tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Okay, uh, and then Fairbury uh, coming off a twenty-three and three season last year. Yeah, uh, is preseason number eight uh, in in C one. So we've got two teams there. Uh, I'm looking at C two, and it looks light there. Uh, I don't believe we have any teams preseason ranked in. Yeah, I think you're uh, correct. C two um, in D one. I think we might have got shut out as well, Taylor. Uh, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, for girls. Yep. Uh, for girls, we did, and then in uh, in D two we have extra Milligan, uh, who was fourteen and ten last year. Uh, it's interesting in D two they 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 might have taken a page out of the volleyball range. Yeah, so I noticed that too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and probably well deserved, uh, to be honest with you. So uh, uh, you have Giltner uh, is 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 fourth there, uh, well represented CRC. Extra Milligan is sixth, and Meridian Strive School also. Uh, is 10th uh, than in the preseason ranking. So, um, you know, I'm just trying to off the top of my head uh, think of think of boys. I, I know in Class A, uh, everybody thinks probably Omaha South would be the team to beat there yep. uh, in Class A. And and actually, uh, I know in, uh, I know Nebraska high school hoops tweeted their uh, preseason rank. I tweeted their preseason rankings out today. We could probably pull those up real quick. But uh, I, I know mm-hmm. I think probably Coach Hudson is. Uh, uh, I was pretty excited uh, over in High Plains about uh, about uh, about what he's uh, facing this year. I know he's got some new faces coming on, but they obviously made it to the uh, made it to the state finals last year. Um, here I got those uh, pulled up right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, they've got Omaha South, obviously number one. Uh, Bellevue West number two. They do have Millard West ranked ninth preseason there uh, in their rankings, and and I believe Mike, uh, that's a pull of fifteen uh, Class A coaches. Yeah, so, I saw that. Uh, yep. So uh, you know, pretty good sampling of the uh, of the coaches there, and then in uh, in Class B, uh, he has Omaha Scott number one. Uh, they defended uh, their defending state champions, Elkhorn South two, uh, and uh, here at the uh, eighth and ninth, he has York and Aurora uh, both ranked there uh, as well. So uh, I saw York, I believe Plattsmouth is seventh, and I saw I think York played them in a exhibition, and the boys. Uh, I believe hit 11 three pointers. I saw, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Um, Coach Lamberty at uh, coming from Howells Dodge has done a great job there with York, and obviously uh, they'll have the loss of uh, Ty Danielson from last year. He's starting at UNK this year, and uh, um, two Strive athletes from last year starting at UNK. Mackenzie Brown, obviously from Northwest on yeah. the girls' side. So uh, there'll be uh, some some interesting stuff there. I think Southern Valley. Uh, probably uh, is pretty excited about what they have going yeah. uh, for boys basketball. Definitely. Um, and, uh, you know, I think obviously Extra Milligan uh, would be a team uh, that went to the state tournament last year. And High Plains, I believe, beat them in the first round, if I'm not mistaken. So, Correct. So uh, I think Crossroads Conference will, will probably be a, uh, another solid uh, another solid conference in the, in the small schools. And we'll see a lot of those schools, obviously, on strive. Yeah, and, and... – this is always tough. Obviously, uh, you know, all, all the newspapers and everyone just put out one ranking and then they follow up in January. This is just, right. you know, Boone Central is going to be good this year in basketball, I'm assuming. But, geez, they just they played, on, played a football game on Tuesday. Um, right. And it's just December is a hard month. If you can get through it with some wins, just being based on being athletic, um, puts yourself in a good spot for January. And so... We'll, we'll uh, definitely be uh, keeping our eye out on the games here in December, and um, you know there may be some injuries and things like that to follow, and 
we'll kind of watch these scores and we'll again do one more show uh before christmas just kind of recap everything and um and then hit it hard in january and we'll get some solid rankings to go off of on on what what the uh what the papers and online sites and um are looking at and um I guess the last thing, Tony, I just wanted you to talk about kind of what we chatted about on how we're going to kind of curate content. Uh, you know, we're not going to maybe, like we did for football, do a game of the week, um, but kind of do a preview of five games, girls and boys total, five games just kind of to watch. Um, and we'll post that. We're going to try to get that up every Thursday morning um, and just kind of a little bit of a preview that you can watch on Strive. So, um you want to talk about that a little bit, and then we could probably close up. Yeah, well, absolutely. Stay busy. I'd probably be remiss, too, if we didn't uh, speak just a smidge about wrestling, just because I know uh, yeah. we're starting to get a few more events, wrestling events streamed, Correct. And, and wrestling is big in Syracuse, uh, and uh, they're one of our schools, and, and, and they've got a guy in Matt Clark, uh, Taylor, who – has uh, 38 consecutive pins as a heavyweight, uh, seven more pins, and he'll he'll have set uh, Mike Shaw's uh, state record. Oh, nice! Um, uh, you know he's a six-five guy and and wrestling at 285, and and uh, he's been uh, uh, he's been really good for three years. And he enters his senior year. You know, probably going to play Division One football would be our guess. Uh, but uh, we've got a lot of schools, you know, that di- that do really well in wrestling as well. So we'll try to cover some wrestling yeah. as, as as much as we can uh, as well. But yeah, to your point, uh, we're gonna try to try to uh, feature about five games and, and and talk about those just a little bit uh, as the season gets going. I don't know that mm-hmm. we'll maybe have anything. Um, I don't know that we'll have anything maybe this week, but as we get a week worth of games maybe under our belt, uh, we'll start previewing uh, uh, four, five, six games every week on the website. And then uh, we had our rewind on Saturday mornings uh, during the basketball season and or the football season. And what I think we'll try to do during uh, basketball is with games going really Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll try to do that sometime on Sunday, do kind of a week in review and, and, and preview the week upcoming a little bit as well. And again, that will really get rolling uh, after holiday tournament time. Once January comes, and uh, end of January we'll hit conference tournament time, and then you know mid February is when when sub districts and districts uh, get rolling around. So uh, it should be an exciting winter, and 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 we're really excited to uh, we're really excited to uh, to continue to, uh, to talk to our kids and talk to our coaches and and promote our, promote our strive schools. Absolutely. All right. My kids are calling me, and I'm sure yours are too, Tony. Um, thanks for uh, tuning in here. We'll get the recording. This is obviously uh, recorded, and we will get that up and on strivesports.com. Remember, use the hashtag Live, and we're gonna, we've got some exciting things. I've got some cool ideas. Hopefully, they'll work out um, technology-wise um, starting in January to get some more engagement on the show. We want to hear from you guys. We want to hear what's going on. We're going to try to get more of our schools to be, uh, you know, the students publishing stuff on strivesports.com when they're writing articles and things like that. So a lot of cool things coming up in January and we appreciate all the support from our um, schools and, and across the state. So have a good night, everybody, and we will see you all later.